I was actually surprised we had gone on like 138 episodes without ever having to trash one, you know? It's not a bird, it's not a plane, it's superhero slave. It's a modern podcast where we talk about everything that's great. Like movies, TV, superheroes. It's superhero slave. Hello everyone and welcome to Super Hero Slate, the show where we run down the latest super entertainment news. We love TV, movies, and superheroes, so let's talk it all out. My name is Chris Dillard. And my name is Mike Royer. And we're back this week with a real episode. And we're blown <laughs> away by that Punisher trailer. Chick, chick, boom. Yes, yeah, so maybe Gambit will be a good movie after all, Mike. <laughs> well, 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 let's, let's we doubt it. Well. We doubt it. Be, care- be careful. <laughs> yeah, uh, we, we give you our thoughts on Kingsman the Golden Circle and more. Yeah, this was a pretty heavy trailer week this week. Not a whole lot of crossover, I would say, with our show, but we will be talking about a few. But I did want to say the um, the new Wes Anderson movie looks awesome, in my opinion. Um, oh, right. It's called, yeah. uh, it's called Isle of Dogs. It's in the same fashion of Fantastic Mr. Fox of stop motion. It almost looks like they could quite possibly maybe even share in the same universe because you know you got kind of like talking dog and in in this movie and then there was talking foxes and farm animals in the other movie so i'm really looking forward to it It, you know it looks awesome but you kind of you have to be like a wes anderson person and also a fantastic mr fox person so sometimes you you know they might not cross over Mm -hmm. yeah i mean i i'm a i'm a huge uh, like a huge fan of fantastic mr fox i I remember when it came out, um, I believe it was 2009 or so, and, and like, it really, I, I wasn't, like, a big Wes Anderson film, like, fan at the time, and it just, it hit me pretty hard, so I definitely, uh, something resonated with that, but this one, I mean, I'm looking forward to Isle of Dogs, but it looks almost identical, and, and I, I really hope it's not. I think maybe the trailer's just there to bring everybody in who's like, oh, yeah, Wes Anderson, you know, this is his quirkiness, the way they did this. So I'm, I'm, I've got high hopes for it as well, but I, I, I'm a huge fan of Fantastic Mr. Fox, and I hope it's just not a rehash. You, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Well, I, I have a theory that Wes Anderson is is just so influential right now on other people that make movies that I feel like, you know, we got probably some people in film school right now that, you know, might actually be making feature films in like, you know, five to ten years, and we're going to be seeing some Wes Anderson influence in the future. Just kind of like we're seeing like Steven Spielberg's influence on other directors like right now. Uh, So uh, we might be getting a little bit more Wes Anderson vibe uh, Mm -hmm. coming up maybe later. Yeah, it depends. So, I mean, I don't know if you know this. I mean, this is not show really, but Fantastic Mr. Fox was a big... Um, deal because I, they they actually filmed they filmed everything in like Europe and Anderson never really came to set they just sent him the video over the internet <laughs> to review it so like is he technically really the director like of this movie even though he's just kind of getting the stuff at the end of the day so um, I don't know. There, there was a bit there's like a big thing about it, like you know uh, is he the director is the person who was in Europe actually making things that day the director so. Uh, I, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm looking forward to this. It's definitely got um, it's you know uh, stories by uh, several Coppola family members, Roman Coppola and Jason Schwartzman, who's related to it. So definitely looking forward to that that kind of stuff, uh, for sure. And then I guess we to address the um the the elephant in the room. Yeah, I messed up last week, Mike. That was <laughs> me. So um, lesson lesson yeah. learned. Don't assume your settings are the same after you update your computer that's that's really all i can say because we did the whole episode and and then some and my audio was not there i have all the mics but not none of mine yeah so. well i i think maybe that 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 leads in pretty quickly to what we're going to talk about here we're gonna we're just gonna recap what maybe you guys didn't get to hear last week mm-hmm. just real quick yeah yeah so we're, we decided to just kind of go over our notes are still there the little apology that I, I recorded is still there, and some of Mike's funny witticisms to open us up. But we're just going to go through this, uh, kind of, I guess, briefly, not not extrapolate a whole lot on it. But um, if you're ready for it, Mike, we're ready to go again. Some news this week? Are you ready? Yeah, I'll lay it out there. <laughs> okay, so last week we got the confirmation that Star Wars Episode Nine will be directed by J.J. Abrams and written by J.J. Abrams and Chris Terrio. Yeah, which just feels like ancient news with how quickly this stuff moves. <laughs> yeah, it, it really does. Um, I, I, I all, Most of my immediate anger with that announcement has subsided, and I'm just kind <laughs> of 
just you know like all right whatever i actually it's watched wa- it. it's it's washed over you you have accepted it <laughs> no i'm not i'm not i'm not even gone that far i've just kind of forgotten it like there are, there are more important things to worry about mike um <laughs> but i did watch episode seven this weekend and it, it wasn't any easier to watch it this time around than it was the first time Yikes, so. man but, but again the thing is with chris terrio who wrote batman v superman in the upcoming Justice League, little that's a little more concerning on my ends, but we'll we'll definitely have to see how Justice League plays out. I know you're not as excited as I am, but but that oh that, for Justice League for Justice League, yeah. Oh yeah, no, I'm more excited for it seems like Star Wars than you mm-hmm. are. <laughs> Did, would you trust the guy who wrote Batman v Superman with your Star Wars? It, it's really hard okay. for me to ever place the place blame or place praise on writers for screenplays, just because. They transform into such a different thing once you see it on screen. So mm-hmm. it's really weird. <laughs> it definitely, definitely is. So, I mean, that's – some people are very happy. Some people are creating petitions to not let him make this movie. So <laughs> we're, we're going to have to see how this one plays uh, of off over the next, like, what, two and a quarter years almost? So. Yeah, we got a while. We don't even have episode eight yet. What are we worried about? Uh, Stan Lee has filmed cameos for his next five Marvel movies, at least that we know of. Um, that includes upcoming Thor Ragnarok, Black Panther, Avengers 3, Ant-Man and the Wasp, and Avengers 4. Do you remember what movie in that time frame that they didn't mention yet? Yeah, it was uh, Captain Marvel, and we, yeah. weren't, we weren't really sure what was going on there. Uh, we know it was going to be in the past, so mm-hmm. we were like, oh, maybe they're going to need to insert a younger Stan Lee, which maybe might be it. But it seems weird to exclude him from a movie, so who knows? Maybe they just haven't gotten around to filming it yet, but... I think last week I said, sadly, Stanley's getting old. The cynical side of me knows that they filmed five cameos in a row, row because you know mm-hmm. you kind of got them. You got to get them done. <laughs> There's a time limit, unfortunately. Uh, but also, I think more interestingly, there was kind of a rumor floating around, and Leonardo DiCaprio said he would be interested in playing Stanley in a biopic. Yeah. So that was kind of cool. I thought that was a cool move. You know, he just decided to just skip the whole being in a superhero franchise and just go right to the top and just, I'm going to play the guy that created the superhero franchise. So I thought that was kind of cool. Yep. Until we also had the news that he might play the Joker in the origin film from Martin Scorsese. Yeah. So what, what, yeah, what do you, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> yeah. Pick, pick something, man. Just, just do it or don't do it. We don't care. Whatever you want to do. Uh, the X Men movie New Mutants, which comes out in April, has been done as finished filming last week as well. Um, uh-huh. They've kind of, you know, described it as like a horror film, kind of like um, I get not maybe Saw, but like these kids are in like a, some sort of haunted house. It's a very smaller, yeah. not a huge X Men film. So yeah, more toned down scenario. It doesn't seem like the world is going to be at stake, which might be refreshing. Oh man, will it ever? Uh, I can't wait till they just. Fox just lets them, these directors have their own way with these movies, or or gives it back to Marvel. Either way, they got money to do it. Yeah, um, that's one thing. We also got our first looks at David Harbor as Hellboy, uh, the first official look, and then an on-set photo. I, Spoilers: He was jacked. <laughs> he uh, he definitely is 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 bringing that comic book version to life. Uh, when I first saw it, I thought it was the original actor Ron Perlman, but no, he he pulls it off, and he he looks. Uh, not as he doesn't have the fake abs that Ron Perlman had on, but he he looks, <laughs> I don't know, um, like a red Luke Cage, I guess. Like he's, he's yeah, like absolutely, absolutely nothing to complain about there. So that's refreshing. Yeah, uh, definitely, definitely. Both those photos are an old news to, to look that up. So that's really cool. Wonder Woman two will officially be directed by Patty Jenkins, so she'll be returning to that film, which is available for home release. If you want to bring it home, uh, my wife is on the fence. I'm like, I don't own any other DC movies, so. If you do this, this will be the only one. And lastly, the Batman might lose Deathstroke with actor Joe Manganiello. Uh, sorry, Joe. Uh, I mean, I feel sorry for him, but also he's he's married to um, what's Sof- her face? That's Sophia Vergara. Family. Yeah, you, you can't feel too bad for a guy that's married to her. So yeah, I mean, he, he got his <laughs> start in the first Spider-Man trilogy as Flash Thompson. And he has definitely oh, come yeah, a long way. Oh, yeah, he was, wasn't he? I totally forgot that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah he, he came a long way from, from just being a bully on, on Spider-Man oh, movies. Man. that's hilarious. Yeah, so um, he, we might lose it because um, I think we think the script has been rewritten and it will not include him anymore. And um, I believe Arrow, season whatever they're on now, six? Is it six? I don't, Probably. I don't watch it anymore because I hate it. Oh, oh, it's five years of flashbacks, so the flashbacks are over, so this is six. He might come back as the villain. So if they can use him in TV, they probably don't have any plans with him in the movies. So. Yeah, maybe. 
So there's there's last week's news in a nutshell, at least the highlights. I, th- I feel. I mean, to me, that's that's the highlights to me. Um, but now we're here for this week, and we just got off the microphone recording. <laughs> Please finish that sentence, Chris. <laughs> we just got off the microphone recording the Kingsman the Golden Circle review show, Mike. Please get your head out of the gut. Now it's fine. It's cool. So we kind of get our thoughts and impressions. First couple minutes are spoiler free, and then we get into spoilers. Mike, um, we know that I, I, I absolutely had a great time. I love it. If you love the first one, you're going to love this one. Go see it in the theater. Mike? Your thoughts? It was it was a decisive uh, <laughs> review for sure. Uh, we are kind of on opposite ends of the fence for this movie, but surprisingly, I would still recommend it. So if you want to understand how that's even possible, uh, go listen to our review. Uh, uh, Chris would probably say I'm nitpicking. I would say maybe uh, maybe Chris is having too much of a good time if that's even possible. <laughs> look, but, look. <laughs> if I can admit the Inhumans was a shit show to watch in theaters, Mike, I can I can I can do this. <laughs> But so th- that's always fun. I like it when we uh, when we uh, review stuff that we don't agree on. So uh, <laughs> go listen to that lively conversation uh, about Kingsman: The Golden oh, yeah. Circle. Yeah, definitely. Uh, if you're on the fence, like again, we both recommend go watching it. Uh, I would recommend go seeing the first one first if you haven't. But if you haven't by this far, you probably won't want to see the second one. So what am I talking about? Um, <laughs> so our review episodes. If you're subscribed, it's just in the feed. You'll you'll already probably have it downloaded. If not, head over to YouTube or iTunes. Or anywhere you get our show, and then it should be there for you to listen to. So There you go. So we got that going for us. Big drop this week. The Punisher gave us his first trailer, Mike. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I have to always point out, it does the one thing friend of the show Quentin Parker hates in any trailer. <laughs> where they try to sync up your the gun firing and the gun like reloads with the music. And- I guess that's a very specific... Uh- a specific thing that would uh, annoy somebody. Yes, but I, I, I mean, now that he pointed it out, I'm like, man, they do this a lot in a lot of movie trailers <laughs> and, and TV trailers. But I gotta say, uh, the use of Metallica in the Punisher trailer was a very inspired choice. I, <laughs> I believe it's the song One, but also, by the way, so that's even more. And um, it's violent. God, is it violent. Yeah, I felt a little bit of... Um maybe some John Wick inspiration with the gunplay. I mean, it was a very brief moment, but um, it definitely looks like John Berthal knows what he's doing when he has a gun in his hand. He <laughs> seems very tactical, very methodical in some of the scenes. So, uh, you know, maybe just some of that inspiration is coming in, and that it would be refreshing just because I want... These Netflix shows don't have the grandiose uh, CG that the movies have. So they need to make sure that when they're doing action, they're doing it right and they're doing it um, effectively because uh, Iron Fist 100% did not do it right. Mm-hmm. So um, if the Punisher can kind of pull off this um, awesome, like just like brutal fight scenes, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I mean, the Punisher looks to, f- un- to fit outside the mold of the other shows. Uh, simply because there's not someone just fighting uh, this. This he is actually the one going on the offensive. It looks like, and most of the other shows were people just kind of reacting to things around them. Um, so I'm glad to see they've taken you know him from the Daredevil season two and gone forward. Now a couple people have pointed out that the trailer contradicts earlier footage, but I think um, it's it's all PTSD because it, it looks like his wife gets shot in the bedroom, but we know she got shot in the park. Uh, his uh-huh. family was killed in the park, so. Um, we we don't expect to see a fully healed uh, Frank Castle um, being being very nice to people throughout this. It looks like <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I like the characters. I like the style. I like you know he just he just had like I saw an interview with Jimmy Kimmel of him and like John Berthold. He's such like a, a cool guy, but then like in oh, yeah. every show he's in, I'm like he's a hard motherfucker. Like I not I don't want to <laughs> mess with him. I don't even want to talk to him. He's got that thousand yard stare down to an art. Like I, I believe it. I'm looking forward to seeing the Punisher, um, and and that's when the next topic is. When's it gonna release, Mike? We are nobody knows at this point. I don't even think Netflix knows when they're releasing the Punisher. They're just they're just dragging us along <laughs> for the ride here. Yeah, we got into a little bit of a conversation about it last week, where I kind of theorized maybe they would drop this early November, right around Veterans Day, just because mm-hmm. it kind of jives with the Punisher's character. But uh, I guess you kind of came across something that said it might be October thirteenth. Yes. So um, one of the thi- we we've talked about this release date more than probably any other show's <laughs> release date ever. Um, October sixth is the Friday of New York Comic Con, 
whenever they bring Marvel's TV shows hard because they record all the shows in New York. It's it's the deal mm-hmm. with them. These are New York characters. It's awesome. And New York Comic Con's, I think, more TV than movies. Um, anyway, so we thought maybe they might release it that day. Well, that wouldn't make any sense to have the panel on the day of release because they do it at 3 a.m., like you pointed out. Mm-hmm. So what if they said, oh... By the way, all the episodes are going to be out next week, October 13th. And then there was a little magazine that said the show uh, will debut October 13th. So Yeah, so it looks like somebody uh, jumped the gun on, on print media pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah, well, also, what if print media is kind of guessing and that was like a placeholder? Because that magazine's not out in the world yet. So, like, what I'm still, I still think it could be anywhere between October 13th and the date you picked, Mike. Uh, was it November 10th? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, I'm not going to complain if it comes out October 13th because that just means we get it sooner. Yeah. You know, that means uh, my weekend there is going to be full of the Punisher, and then what? I have maybe two more weekends until Stranger Things. Yeah. So, and that gives that gets me into November, which just gets me closer to Thor, and then right off of Thor, I'm like rolling in the Star Wars. I'm just planning out the rest of my year already. <laughs> yeah, I mean, November November is is big. Um, there's I think. If they avoided November, they'd be smart, Mike, because we have Thor, Justice League, and the Disney Pixar movie Coco all in November weekends. Mm-hmm. So if if they wanted to release Punisher against any of those movies, they'd probably lose a lot. Like they wouldn't get as much initial traction. Whereas mm-hmm. I don't think anything comes out on October thirteenth. Do you? And that's this. Yeah, I don't. I, I I don't think so. And that's two weeks to to divulge possibly thirteen episodes. It is thirteen episodes of the Punisher before. Stranger Things 2 comes along, so mm-hmm. um, I would love October 13th personally, uh, but if they do November 10th, that's that that might be a, an okay weekend as well. well. It's up in the air. Nobody knows. They won't tell us. <laughs> Why are they being so secretive, Mike? What do they got to hide from us? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I guess the only thing it might compete with is um, on October 13th, there's a Netflix original series coming out called Mindhunter, which actually looks really interesting. It's about, like, the FBI figuring out what serial killers are for the first time, uh, like, back in the day. So I, there's that'd be, actually... That'd be tra- very ironic, yeah, having the Punisher. Actually, there, yeah, there was actually a trailer for that show before my viewing of Kingsman, so... Um, I don't know. Maybe they just assume that won't have a whole lot of crossover, or maybe Netflix doesn't worry about competing weekends. You know, maybe they're just like you can binge and watch it whenever. It doesn't matter if things come out on the same weekend. Mm-hmm. I don't know what their deal is, but we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> yeah, it, it, I don't know because I mean, technically, I wouldn't. May, they might not be the same audience for those two shows. So you get, mm-hmm. you get your choice that weekend, or if you got done with one, you can start the other one right away. That way, your binge keeps rolling, man. Just nonstop binge. Oh, keep so, rolling on that binge. So, Punisher's coming soon. We're excited. First official teaser. I guess not teaser. It's a trailer. I don't know why I took, wrote teaser. That's a full trailer. We got it. So, I think we're within um, two months of it coming out. So, I, I agree. If not a month and a half. Thor Ragnarok dropped. Uh, they didn't drop it. This is actually done by, I think, Nerdist Industries or something like that. Um, mm-hmm. A 1987 version of their trailer. And... Um, most of the times I hate these things because it's just the regular trailer with with some old graphics and then that flicker filter from from tracking on VHS tapes. Mm-hmm. Well, this one went a little extra mile. They cut some stuff. They added some effects. They even used old Hulk versus Thor footage from the Incredible yeah. Hulk TV show. So the Hulk you see is the Lou Ferrigno Hulk from like the 80s. And there's a fight scene where they fight the old Thor from that show as well. Uh, and they even they even redid the audio for like the dialogue to make it sound yeah. like it's it's kind of and one and one thing I, I really appreciated is they um they kind of doubled down on that uh, what they did back in the eighties for special effects where you kind of like layered things onto glass. Uh, so you can kind of see like the out they they went through and they meticulously like rotoscoped some of the trailer to kind of put in outlines on some of these vehicles that were moving forward and backwards in the in the plane so yeah there's a lot of detail like if you want to make a retro trailer that's how you do it so if anybody out there for some reason like really wants to do that like that's what you have to live up to like you can't just throw a filter over it anymore <laughs> well what i also enjoy is like is they take the the a lot of people forget trailers from the 80s and early 90s give you almost five minutes of just a narrator telling you what the movie is <laughs> yeah. and, and like you like now it's like they the trailer tells like the, the movie tells the story in the trailer but like you had a narrator back then giving you everything they're like thor is <laughs> fantasy thor is action thor is <laughs> 
action fantasy. I'm like, okay, this is awesome. Like this is this is true nostalgia at, at its best. So I'm, I'm really glad that they they've kind of a lot of. I mean, this isn't Marvel, but like they leaned into it. And like, okay, let's do it some justice and, and yeah. have some fun I think with that- this. I think they even included a an, a younger looking Jeff Goldblum too as the from, Grandmaster. from the so. fly. They took the the footage from the fly <laughs> and did it in there, and yeah, they so. added like fake fire and like 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 you said rotoscope fire behind some of the stuff and explosions yeah. to make it look like like they, they, it wasn't from the trailer. They just added it in there to make it look like oh, there's explosions. Yeah. It awesome was, attention to detail. It's it's fun. It's great. So um, normally, like I said, I don't push those, but if you guys want to watch something fun, go check that out. Yeah. Um, next up, ne- uh, not next up, but also next year. Uh, it's hard to believe less than a year away. We're getting Ant Man two, Mike. I mean, yeah. When did you ever think we'd say the sequel to Ant Man is coming out in theaters? <laughs> uh, but we got our first look at from the set of uh, Evangeline Lilly as Hope Van Dyne in her Wasp outfit on set. Uh, it also this one shows the helmet. We haven't seen the helmet, I think, before, and mm-hmm. um, it looks very sleek. I kind of like yes. it. I like the look. It looks like it could be adapted into a motorcycle helmet <laughs> very easily. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's kind of cool seeing the uh, the costume out in in the works. You know, there are some shots. I don't I don't think they're here, but they, they they show her wings as well, which are very translucent, like very light translucent wings. So mm-hmm. why does she get wings and Ant Man doesn't? I don't know, man. But I mean, yeah, I it, don't know. It looks like also she has some things on her wrist to maybe zap people, like the wasp usually does when she shrinks. She has like the stingers or whatever sting people um and yeah i don't know it's just it's just cool to see more ant-man and the wasp and them like okay yeah. we're really gonna give her the outfit we're not just teasing guys yeah i think one thing i'd like to see in this movie is since um since pym is still this guy that if i remember right doesn't he kind of have like a little bit of a, a of a grudge against the stark family if I if I recall correctly, like he doesn't want to get mixed up in all of them. Uh, yeah, yeah, he uh, because of um, at the intro when they, they reversed, like they had a Haley Atwell and uh, Howard Stark as like the shield, and he they were like, we want this, and he's like, no. So yeah, yeah. I would I would kind of like to see maybe that rivalry like continued and stuff like that. Like I'd like to see like um, Paul Rudd's character kind of like chastise a little bit uh, Scott Lang to be like, oh, you went and fought with those guys. I can't believe you. You would run around with that crew. Like, you know, you should, you should be here with <laughs> us. And like, I like the idea that they're not getting their technology from uh, Tony Stark. They're getting their stuff from another scientist. So I think that's kind of cool. Yeah. I mean, who knows how Avengers three is going to play out. Um, but I'm definitely looking forward to seeing, I mean, just, I, just, I was thinking about this, uh, driving earlier today. Um, I haven't watched Civil War in a little bit, and I love the scene where he goes large in Civil War and how that totally changes the dynamic of that battle at the airport. So Mm -hmm. I really want to see what they do size-wise in this movie and maybe how that can play into Avengers 3 and 4, like his his ability to go into different universes and and back and forth, like or the microverse and back and forth. Yeah, and this also this suit that she's wearing kind of reminds me of when we saw one of the first onset photos of uh, the Black Panther, where it looks a little loose along the sides. So this could be a suit that maybe gets rigged up with wires too. It doesn't look like it's exactly uh, form fitting. So there's there's some room there to move. So I think maybe there's she's walking to a wire rig maybe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can see like what's that eight nine extension cords right beside her tied up together on the floor. Like they're they're walking to something heavy. To, like mm-hmm. to mess around with but um yeah i don't know it's again i can't believe we're saying ant-man 2 is next year like <laughs> less, less than a year from ant-man 2 so what a world we live in speaking of avengers avengers 4 the casting call for this uh has called for women engineers in the 1960s mike do you mm. remember any characters that might have been around in the 1960s well miss peggy carter that's right miss peggy carter might return um, I don't, I don't see why she wouldn't. Uh, I think her one TV show on ABC, she left Agent Carter. Well, she didn't leave Agent Carter. Agent Carter got canceled because she was on the other show. I think it got canceled as well. So she's, she's not out doing a whole lot that I can think of. Um, and then she went ahead and posted this, um, picture on Instagram using mocap dots on her face. Mm-hmm. And these are the same dots they used for Ant-Man and Civil War. And I think the Winter Soldier as well to age her up a little bit. Mm-hmm. So maybe not Civil War. I think I don't think she was in that. I think she just died in that one. Uh, but anyway, um, so those are those are the dots. And a couple weeks ago, she was posting pictures with Louis Desposito, the president of Marvel Studios. Um, we, we we talked about that. So, well, you know, kind of you know, two things pop up into my head when we're talking about 
traveling to the 1960s in Avengers 4, the first one that pops in my head is Time Gem. Are mm-hmm. we actually maybe physically going to go be going back in time? That might be kind of crazy to see how that works. Maybe some of our heroes will be thrown back in time, maybe be thrown into different dimensions. There's There could be some crazy stuff going on with that Infinity Gauntlet. Or maybe what could be happening is we're just doing a flashback. Maybe there's some sort of device, some sort of thing that was made in the past, and we're, we're flashing back to get more context on it or something like that. But uh, who knows? Uh, we, love, we love Haley Atwell over here at Superhero Slate, so uh, if she's going to pop back up in, on the screen, I'm okay. Yeah, I, I think everyone wants to see. I mean, I would love to see a season three of her show um, or you know, even evolve it into like a, an Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., like a pre cool to agents of shield kind of show you know um because i love i love her and the howard stark dynamic but he's off doing preacher now um so yeah i would like to see them maybe like maybe they learned a little bit about the infinity stones having the tesseract back in the 60s and like okay we know how maybe maybe they made a device to stop it like you said so there's definitely a lot of options out there for avengers 4 um the best part about avengers 3 and 4 mike you know what the best part is What's that, Chris? We don't know a thing. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love going in so dark. I can't wait for the first trailer. Do you think the first trailer will drop in October or with Thor? Oh, man, I mean, yeah, that's got to be coming sooner. Like, that's it's a May movie. This Avengers 3, yeah. next year. Holy crap. And we're, like, it's fall. It's officially <laughs> fall right now. So we're only, like, two seasons away. This is crazy. Yeah, that's right. And um, my, my favorite thing is with it is I think all the other Avengers May Every May movie usually drops in middle of October, so uh-huh. I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna get it in October, Mike. It might they might do it to boost some Inhumans ratings as well, but <laughs> I hope not. Got it. So, yep, we got that coming down the road. So check out Haley Atwell or MoCap Dots. Are you familiar with the comic characters, the Power Pack at all? Uh, vaguely, vaguely. <laughs> okay, so the Power Pack. Um, uh, did you ever read the movie or the book Animorphs? I'm familiar with animals. Okay, so in this one, an alien comes to Earth, and these kids, whose last name is Power, um, like, he's able to gift them each an ability as he dies. So he spreads Mm -hmm. his power evenly amongst these four kids. So one can harness matter, and one can harness, like, you know, energy and stuff like that. So there's four kids who have these powers, and they end up going off in space. Well, Marvel Studios has renewed interest in making this into a film, and I was kind of confused wow. when they said renewed interest. Apparently, Power Pack was on the table early on as being one of the first cosmic movies other than Guardians of the Galaxy. Whoa. So, <laughs> um, because of the success of the cosmic things, and like the, I assume the universe of Marvel going very cosmic after you know, Avengers yeah. 4... Uh, the plan is to develop this as a family, family spy kids like story with Guardians of the Two Galax- Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two producer Jonathan Schwartz on board. So uh, it sounds like they might be stepping into their first kids movie um, <laughs> kind of thing. Uh, I I don't want that. I mean, <laughs> I think the Marvel movies as they are right now are kind of family friendly. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got the lighter jokes in there. It's PG thirteen. I mean, I see tons of kids brought to the theater. I almost wish they would maybe do a different medium if they're going to go family friendly. Like, just you know, do more like Big Hero Six type stuff. You know, make it like three D. You know, three D generated like graphics. I think that would be. I would be fine with that. Then it might be easier to kind of get this like spy kids like story across. But uh, yeah, live action. I think that's going to be weird, man. Now, do you think uh, the Marvel Studios? I think um, again, Ant Man and the Wasp is the only family kind of oriented characters in there well i guess thor a little bit but who knows how that's gonna play out do you think that marvel needs a family of superpowered people together uh like uh, this is our answer to the fantastic four maybe no just get the fantastic four i don't care what you have to do man uh these phases going forward are going to be so interesting and i love like you said we don't really know a whole lot going forward uh so yeah, we're going to have a lot to talk about in, in the coming months. Literally, after Avengers 4, any character in Marvel is on the table. Like Anything can go. It's all wild card. Anything can go. And, and I'm, I'm, I've kind of said that we have to say Power Pack is, is at the forefront of those characters. <laughs> but you know what? We'll, we'll take whatever we can. I'm still hoping for a knock on wood Avengers Secret Invasion down the road. So Ooh, yeah. We'll see how that plays off. Han Solo, again, uh, back in the news. Um, Darth Vader is rumored to show up in the Han Solo movie because of how people reacted so well to him in Rogue One. What do you think, Mike? Do you need Darth Vader in your Han Solo movie? 
man, I don't even know if I need the Han Solo movie to begin with. Uh, and well. with all these, with all the news about the production woes, uh, a swirling, I just don't know how to feel. Star Wars is a is a strange mistress right now, Chris. You know, I I just I don't know how to feel. <laughs> well, so to me, I'm every day I'm a little more okay with Han Solo being a movie because we can't avoid it at this point, and we have <laughs> Donald Glover in it. Okay, we got that to look forward to. Mm-hmm. But I don't think you need Darth Vader in your Han Solo movie, man. That's like putting Jedi's in all your movies. Calm down. If you're gonna explore the world a little bit, do something else. Don't. Don't say Han Solo met Darth Vader when he was young and then again ran into him at Cloud City and shot at him with his blaster. <laughs> so, I, I don't know. I don't think we need that that thing. I, I don't know. Maybe... Well, well, I mean, the reason freaking people responded so positively to Darth Vader wasn't his little one-off scene of don't choke on your ambitions. It was because he mauled a whole bunch of people in a hallway <laughs> like a badass. Like, that's what we liked about it. So, like, it doesn't have to be Darth Vader, like... Just put someone else badass in a hallway killing a bunch of people. Yeah, I mean, I think I think there's a, a... At this point, if we do the Han Solo movie, there's an entire world of characters, the seedy underground that we don't know. We don't need Boba Fett in this Han Solo movie. We, I mean, you could choose any other bounty hunter. I'd probably be happy with it. But not Boba Fett. We don't need Darth Vader. Um, mm. Because I think that kind of... I think it would water down their meeting later in, in uh, Empire Strikes Back. But that's me. What do I know? Star Wars, like you said, it's a mis- mysterious mistress. Yes, and sure. <laughs> and we, we don't we don't know what's going to happen with it. So uh, a lot a lot of questions for Star Wars going forward after Episode Eight. So hopefully we get some answers, and you know a good Obi Wan movie, Mike. That's all we really yeah. ever wanted. X Men Dark Phoenix is the X Men movie we also didn't ask for. That were <laughs> that, remember they keep threatening us with more X Men movies and they keep following through. Uh, actor. The Colossus actor from the early X-Men movies, I think 2, 3, and Days of Future Past, Daniel Cudmore, is to return to the franchise, but he's not allowed to say what character he's playing, so maybe he's not playing Colossus. Mm. Be- well, correct, because we'd have two characters if, playing Colossus at the same time. Yeah, well, correct me if I'm wrong, Dark Phoenix, is is um, Brian Singer doing Dark Phoenix? No, he is. he's done. It is um, the, the guy who wrote the other ones, who's never directed uh, the movie. Okay, gotcha. Well, I still feel like Brian Singer probably has a lot of pull all over these movies, whether he's directing them or not. So, you know, he probably is just like, hey, you're a cool guy. I'll bring you back. I'm sorry that they recasted you with somebody else. <laughs> so, uh, let uh, I don't know. Maybe they'll just make him like a bad guy or something. Yes, yeah, Simon Kinberg is the director and the, and the screenplay writer. So he is writing and directing. And Brian Singer is definitely a producer. So do you, do you think he will play Colossus if he's coming back? Or Like, another theory was he's playing the... The Shi'ar um, uh, person, Gladiator, who's like a big, bulky guy as well, with like a yeah, big mohawk. I, I could see that. I mean, the thing that they're lucky is that the new Colossus hasn't been seen in human form. You know, he's only been shiny. And, but we have seen the other Colossus as a human, but he was basically a kid. Like, he was like a teenager back when he was uh, the Colossus in his fleshy form. So mm-hmm. I don't think we're really going to recognize him. I mean, we talked about in Kingsman how there was a character that came back with a shaved head and we didn't even recognize him. So uh, I think they'll be okay with passing him off as someone else. Yeah, there's, they're definitely throwing a hell of a lot of characters at this Dark Phoenix movie. Um, again, they got almost all the old cast from the first class um and then yeah now these new actors and then more actors from even another trilogy of movies so they're pulling three trilogies together here mike to 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 give us something that probably not gonna be that good so (laughs) we'll keep it quiet mike is really hoping this game movie turns out good he's got you got you bought a lot of stake in channing tatum a long time ago and that (laughs) And, and I, t- I tell you what, man, when I was looking through these show notes before uh, we, w- before my weekend started, I was shocked that we had Gambit news to begin with. <laughs> yeah. So we kind of gave up on this movie. Like, it, it, oh, yeah. we gave up a long time ago on this movie ever happening. But they keep, again, threatening with us more X-Men movies. Um, but they have some possible characters that may show up in this, this Gambit movie because it, it takes place over 25 years. Um, including characters like Richter, I don't know who that is, Fifillet, don't know who that is, <laughs> Danny Moonstar, which actually will be in New Mutants, uh, Multiple Man, we uh, we saw him in, I believe, X3, uh, Marrow, who's also in X3, and a blue X-Men regular, which could be one of two X-Men, Beast or Nightcrawler, I don't know which one. 
So yeah, blue X Men regular. That sets up. It sounds like you're ordering like a drink or something. Yeah. Can the, I get the blue X Men regular, please? Yeah. They they have a place here called Super Chefs, and I could totally see that being on the menu because <laughs> <clears throat> they they're not very superhero friendly. But anyway, uh, so they're trying to I guess bring in more characters, maybe relate it to this a little bit. So, but we also have a, a plot synopsis that might make Gambit fans happy. I'm gonna break down a little bit of this. Um, not gonna read the whole thing, but it's in our show notes. So you can the Gambit flat is, is on trial in New Orleans, and it flashes back to 25 years prior, with an eight-year-old Gambit being like raised by thieves, and he falls for the girl of the other thieving family, and they're like they cause some sort of big commotion. What, what was that? Is that Romeo? Romeo and Juliet there, yeah. yeah. I'd say more Hatfield and McCoys, really. It sounds like a bunch of hillbillies <laughs> just, just getting at each other. <laughs> but then they jumped to 10 years later where he's 18, but that doesn't look like... Ch- Channing Tatum couldn't pull off an 18-year-old Gambit, do you think? No, no, not at all. Yeah, so unless he has some sort of mutant ability that makes him look young forever, or the same age forever, but he's hired to do a job in Paris to steal something from a museum, and the, but the employer is Nathan Eth. Nathaniel Essex, who this he's stealing the briefcase from the end of um, the the last X Men movie that we saw, Apocalypse, that has Logan's blood in it. Oh, okay. So there's a throwback to that. Who's going to be auctioned at the Thieves ball, the yearly Thieves Ball? Okay, great. Oh God. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> at, where in where it's in New Orleans at the Mardi Gras celebration, which of course they got to go French Quarter with this. So, uh, and then he enlists a crew of mutants to pull off this heist. So I. Look, I don't know, man. Uh, I'm trying my, to make biggest, sense of this and trying to trying to enjoy it, but it ain't working out. My my biggest pull away from this is that they're they're gonna make a heist movie. You know, uh, maybe they're trying to follow along the pattern of what these MCU movies have been doing. Of like, oh, you can make a new superhero movie, but you gotta put you gotta make it a type of movie. You know, uh-huh. uh, you know, they're like New Mutants is apparently gonna be a little like a horror haunted house type feel. If this is gonna go with a heist feel, maybe kind of like what Ant Man was. I'm okay with that. I love heist movies to begin with, so this is a good start. But man, this whole gambit just just. Uh, debacle to begin with like this movie was supposed to come out like what like last year <laughs> uh, i think it was this october like i think yeah we, we, or maybe last we should be watching we, we should be like watching this movie right now or at least own it digitally by now so i don't know what's going on with the development it, of this it, film it, it probably was shit the first time and they were like okay look we can't make another bad movie after <laughs> after apocalypse let's let's pump the brakes a little bit but what I, I mean, it looks like they're trying to make this fit into the larger universe, but at the same time, if they're including all these other characters that have already shown up in the X-Men movies, what what, what kind of, are you trying for continuity or are you not trying for continuity? <laughs> Do you just kind of give up and, and hope for the best or what? So yeah, I mean, they're going to be jumping around in time, it sounds like, so I don't know. Uh this does not push the needle in either direction for me. <laughs> well, I think it just, you know, the, the needle moved an, like a little bit to the left and then back to the right just to show that it's still moving. Like, yeah, we're not still we're dead here. yet. So um, I just don't think Chain Tam can pull off an 18-year-old Gambit. So I think that we'll need to readjust that. But oh, whatever. Like, it's going to happen. We can't avoid it. So let's move a little bit. Let's move to this November. Something that is happening that's being worked on. Justice League. Uh, two characters have rumorly been cut from the final cut of the film that were originally right. filmed. So, Kiersey Clemens, uh, whose role is Iris West, is rumored to be cut from the final film, is the first one. Uh-huh. And then Lex Luthor um, has been cut from the film as well. I believe we, we might have talked about that before, because I believe Lex Luthor would have made sense since he was the one communicating with um, Steppenwolf from that uh-huh. cut scene of... Batman v Superman that they they released the day after the movie came out to like no hold on we got deleted scenes here um <laughs> so these these characters are being cut as the movies you know being formulated around do you think that's good or bad uh well I think that kind of falls in line with what we talked about a few weeks ago where kind of Joss Whedon was kind of uh making the ending more finite not kind of leaving it open-ended so much uh, leading it into the next uh, film so i guess they're like i could imagine maybe iris was there to maybe kind of try to usher in a flash story arc for his movie or something so that joss was like now nah, we're just gonna cut that out we got to make this movie make a little bit more sense so mm-hmm. uh, i don't know man i am excited to watch justice league just to see what on earth <laughs> ended coming out of this 
<laughs> so I don't know, man. Well, it's crazy. So to me, like, Kirstie Clemens always said that she had like a badass role in, in Justice League. So she like hyped it up. And now that if it is gone, yeah, it's fine. I think, you know, Joss Whedon, the first Avengers movie was great because it didn't focus on the, the smaller characters, minor characters. Like, we didn't need to see all of like Captain America's, like, what happened to Peggy Carter? What happened to his, you know, Howling Commandos? Thor didn't worry about having Odin and the, the Warriors 3 in the movie. Like, it focused on the main characters for the most part. So by cutting out these ancillary characters for their individual movies coming up, like you said, I think it'll be more focused and more flow a little better at least at least in my book mm-hmm. so i mean i i'm okay i think i i'm 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 excited for justice league and it sounds like a couple other people might be too but the projections are showing 150 million dollar opening weekend for justice league um and that is quite a bit that's still a big weekend but batman v superman was at 166 million opening weekend so it'd be down from that do you think they've lost some people or you know, this can always change as we get closer, but I mean, I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe this is more of an indication of the time of year it's coming out. Possibly, uh, you know, Batman vs Superman was kind of earlier in the year. Maybe they thought it'd be easier to grab uh, some of the box office, but I don't know. They're all just kind of like projections, so who knows what's actually going to come out? I mean. Uh, I'm not comparing this movie to the quality or the successfulness of it, but you know, people projected it to do like what, maybe 80 million, and it did like twice that. So I don't, I uh, don't get like the phenomenon with the it movie. Like everyone, like someone, I was watching Kings where the guys like, yeah, I just came out of it for the third time. I'm like, fucking really? Like what? <laughs> I don't, I don't know, Chris. We're not, we're not much of uh, the horror type, so I think a lot of that goes over our heads. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I mean. Most of these projections have tend to be pretty close, like lately. Like I don't know what they're doing or how they're doing it. So they've got that going for them. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm I'm excited to see it. But I, I know that you know a lot of people still may be bitter from the last few movies, as, as almost, they should be. I almost feel like I'm getting tickets to like an extreme stunt. And, like, someone's trying to jump a dirt bike over, like, 40 buses. And it's either going to be awesome or it's he's going to wreck and it's going to be awesome. So I don't really know what to think. <laughs> the, the thing is, I saw I think they put the trailer before Kingsman, um, the older trailer. And I everyone just looks like they're having fun for once in a DC movie. And I haven't seen mm-hmm. that yet. And I, it was kind of contagious. So I'm like, all right, I get, I get behind this. Aquaman, Jason Momoa is on, on riding the Batmobile about to stab some parademons. I'll take this. He looks like he's having fun. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm on board with that. And I'm, I want to I want to check it out. Who Whoever shows up in it in the final cut, so be it. Um, do you think, my, my last question, do you think we will get a um, Zack Snyder version on the, on the DVD release? Oh, man, I don't know. that. I feel like that DVD is going to be chock full of, of goodies just because this movie has gone through so many uh, production uh, uh, speed bumps. Yeah, I'm not going to say they're goodies, but there's going to be stuff there to watch. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's cool. Let's, we'll check that out. That's um, November 17th. So we got Thor then uh, on the 3rd and then two weeks up until that. So we've got a, we got a busy November for once. Man of Steel 2 is is coming, Mike, and possibly from mm. director Matthew Vaughn, who mm. just did Kingsman and Kingsman 2. So I think that's his last two movies. So he's ta- they've talked about like if he did the movie, how how much brighter and happier it would be. Like, oh, it's actually like a, Superman's a symbol of hope. Do you think Matthew Vaughn would be good to do a Superman sequel after? Well, I mean, uh, the last movie I saw of his, I was uh, now I was a little lukewarm on, but I still love Matthew Vaughn. I mean, Kingsman One was awesome. I love the first Kick Ass movie. He's still an awesome director, and I would love him to pretty much do everything. Um, so yeah, I I think if Man of Steel Two has to happen, <laughs> uh, Matthew Vaughn would be a good choice. I think his his ability to save the X Men franchise with First Class. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely speaks a lot to him, but I would say they'd have to let him do it. Like, don't don't hover don't don't hover over his shoulder while he's making it. Um, just let Matthew Vaughn make make a Superman movie. Sure, it can fit in the universe, but like, don't say, "Hey, you're gonna do it this way and this way and this way," because I think you would you you drown him, you'd smother out what like his creativity. But I'd love to see his action scenes in a Superman movie. Who he's fighting? Like I would love to see what he can do with some action in those. 
Yeah, um, well, I mean, Aquaman is going to be a big indicator of how Warner Brothers is going to be handling these directors for their movies. Because we talked about the whole regime shift at Warner Brothers, how we still got to get these movies out of the way before we start seeing like a pure like power shift in these movies. And Aquaman is going to be really that first movie where we don't have any like meddling from the older um, echelon from Warner mm-hmm. Brothers. So if Aquaman goes well and that, that director really... Um, really shows his vision maybe we'll see matthew vaughn's vision for man of steel too i would definitely love to see it uh but i mean you you talk about this old version of dc i think they they might have a new version but they still got some stumbling blocks to go through because we still have this joker origin movie (laughs) standing out here in the open like what's going on with this um apparently um again uh produced by martin scorsese hopefully starring leonardo dicaprio the origin, the origin film, the script is almost completed. Mike, like, apparently they've been working on this for a while. But at the same time, I'm not surprised someone didn't just have a Joker origin script in their back pocket. They've been holding on to for about 20 years. So, what do you what do you make of this whole origin movie? I don't stuff? know. I. I mean, I hear people saying that, you know, once you show the origin of a, of a villain, he becomes less scary. Mm-hmm. You know, you kind of want him to be a little, bit, a little bit more cryptic, but I don't know, man. I just, they, they miffed it on the Joker for Suicide Squad already, so, like, how am I supposed to be invested in what happens to the Joker going forward, you know? Yeah, um, I mean, I think my, my theory would be let the Joker sit. <laughs> don't try <laughs> to make up for Suicide Squad immediately with an apology origin film that's not connected to any other movies. Um, now, on that said, I'd like to see a gangster film set in the DC Universe. Uh, I do love the Elseworlds stories there where they, they go and like tell, like, oh, in this universe it's steampunk Batman kind of thing. Um, but like maybe this one, the Joker came around in like the 1930s or whatever during prohibition i think that'd be fun uh will we get that probably not but (laughs) but i mean i don't know i honestly don't know i don't know what to make of this like every time i think i'm on i'm like great i can get behind this warner brothers dc universe they go and do something like this and (laughs) i just can't get it just don't get it that's fine that's fine are you still watching any of the cw shows mike at all uh I'm basically just on the Flash right now. That's kind of like the last uh, decent one out there. Curious to see if Black Lightning ends up being any good. Uh, but yeah, it's basically just the Flash right now. Okay, so there are, I believe, five, maybe five shows on on the CW this fall, and uh, they're doing a crossover. But I don't think this crossover includes um, Black Lightning. So it's just the four shows: Supergirl, Legends of Tomorrow, The Flash, and Arrow. And I believe it's November 27th and 20th, a two-day event of doing this crossover called Crisis on Earth X. And it looks to be focused on The Flash's wedding, it looks like, Uh here. And it's got an old comic book cover art style with all the characters. There's one new character here called The Ray. Uh, He is a new character being added for this, um, maybe this crossover. Or if not, yeah, yeah, show. Uh, the Ray, he was uh, in some of the Justice League animated stuff. So it's an interesting character to see how he's going to pan out. I don't know if they're adding him to uh, Legends of Tomorrow or what team he's going to be joining. Maybe he's just like a one-off. Who knows? Yeah, they've, they've cast... I forget the actor's name, but um, he was in... So, I don't remember. That's, that's very vague and, and horrible of me, but oh well. Um, so we've got a bunch of characters here. It looks like the... Good versions on the left, battling evil versions on the right, or is that just more, you know, masters of the universe or whatever they call themselves? Yeah, they they seem to be like alternate dimension type characters because the the opponent going up against Supergirl just looks like Supergirl with a mask and a different costume on. So an evil version uh, of a Supergirl outfit. Wow. Yeah, it looks like they're going to be bringing in some other Earths. I mean, I mean, it says Earth X, so maybe they're literally bringing in Earth X, and all these people are from there. But who knows? They always got to find a way to to shoehorn Supergirl into the universe because, unfortunately, they wrote her on a different Earth, and now they have to use portals to bring her in whenever there's a crossover, which is uh, always fun. <laughs> it definitely uh, is, is wild, and it looks like maybe is that Captain Cold behind Barry's head? There, you think he's coming back for this? No, I don't know. I don't. I it's thought like he glass. died, but maybe he came back. I, I can't keep track of it's, this man. So that reverse Flash also looks like the reverse Flash from our world, but like the the death. He didn't he turn in like the Black Flash or something. But he's got two lightning bolts on his chest. Do you think? 
I mean, you think it's a different version of this going to keep bringing back the same characters over and over again? Because <laughs> it looks like the dark archers, like they have two archers here, like one's upwards and one's in the bottom. Like, Well, I think, I mean, I didn't watch a whole lot of the last season of Arrow, but I think there was another new character called like Prometheus or something that had arrows. I don't know. I can't keep track of what's going on in the CW <laughs> anymore, but uh, the... I mean, The Flash is about the only thing with uh, much quality left. So I'll keep watching The Flash, and I'll, I'll watch the crossover just to kind of be a completist. Okay, well, that's cool. Um, I didn't mind the last one they did. What was it? The um, the aliens, the alien invasion? The, the invasion. It was all right. It was okay. It wasn't the worst thing <laughs> out there. Like, I mean, it, 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 but yeah. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe we'll check this out. We'll see how that plays out. Uh, Watchmen is being converted into a TV show, and um, it is, I believe it's HBO's ordered the pilot and possibly the whole series. Uh, what do you, I mean, what do you think of the old Watchmen movie, Mike? I, I, I don't know if I've ever asked you that. I mean, I still, I still like the old Watchmen movie. I am not somebody that read the graphic novel, so I don't really have any sort of opinions on what they cut, what they didn't add in. I hear that there's some sort of giant squid or octopus monster mm. that may have been in the original. So I guess that kind of makes sense that maybe that didn't show up in a, in a theatrical version of this story. But I thought it was cool. It was gritty. It was a, a Snyder pulling it off well. Uh, the characters were pretty were pretty cool. Um, it was kind of like we're. It was almost like you were getting. It's like you were getting a superhero movie without getting a superhero movie. Because back when Watchmen came out, we didn't have any of these giant extended universes. So you kind of just had to wait around until like a new Batman movie came out or something to get like your superhero on. So when Watchmen came out, you're like, oh, sweet, more superheroes on the screen. That's cool. So I liked it. It's it's a little long. I think um, even the extended cut, you know, obviously doesn't help on length. So... I think the last time I watched it, I watched it with a friend of the show, uh, Quentin Parker, and also my wife was watching it too. I think she fell asleep during it, so I think maybe there's a, there's people on both sides of the aisle of the original Watchmen movie. Yeah, I, well, the thing is, the Watchmen original series is 12 issues. Like, that's that's huge to crank out 12 issues. Like, it's only 12 issues into one movie. Like, mm-hmm. so, I, I mean, I don't care so much that they changed the what happened at the end from a, an alien to a bomb that, that's fine um but like trying to get 12 books into one movie is a little a little rough so i think tv was a great spot for it to fit but we have damon lindelof i think he worked on lost and the show the leftovers um mm-hmm. working on this and hbo i did check it they ordered a pilot and what are called backup scripts um so in case it does get you know put into production they could start right away kind of mm-hmm. um but the idea of Watchmen is like vigilantes have been outlawed um, from from the earlys and like the forties from like a, a group called the Minutemen, and like the whole point of this is like don't put your faith in superheroes, and it's mm-hmm. like a whole different like scenario than what we're, we're seeing in other movies today. And um, it's, it's brutal, it's dark, and it's it's mean. It's a mean movie. Yeah. Like it doesn't. I th- it doesn't play nice. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think this could really make a great series. Um, HBO, very trustworthy place to put anything. Uh, They always make really quality stuff, so I'm not worried about the network in any aspect. Um, They always let creators kind of have free reign on what they want to make and what they want to do. Also, we're talking about, like, uh, kind of like street-level superheroes. I think the only one that actually has superpowers is um, Dr. Manhattan. Yes. So really, most of their visual effects, special effects, is just going to go into rendering him. So basically, you're just going to have like some badass like people running around in costumes, like punching stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, they, 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 can, they can achieve that well on whatever budget uh, they're going to do over there at HBO, but uh, they're going to have to get some cool, nerdy stuff over at HBO because they're going to be losing Game of Thrones in uh, two in two years, so they're going to need some awesome stuff to, for, for people to keep their subscriptions because I know a lot of people out there only keep HBO when Game of Thrones is on and then they cancel it and then they bring it back when the new season is there. So, well, uh, they should, they should pick on... up for Westworld because Westworld's oh, yeah. awesome. So Westworld's awesome. HBO, yeah, so HBO's I, got a this. lot coming, and and what I what I want to see from this, and I think what Lindelof is, you know, very hesitant about. I don't want to see it a, a shot for shot adaptation again of the show for thir- oh, yeah. for thirteen episodes. What I would like to see was um, American Gods was on Showtime, right? Or stars uh, or stars or something. Yeah, something with HBO. something with S. So 
the first eight episodes are like maybe half the book. Um, so I would like to see something like where they, they, they tell a little bit more of the story and kind of del- go off panel a bit to tell the story and, um, and, and such. So I want to see something different. I don't want to see panel for panel in a Watchmen show if they, you know, when, when we eventually get this Watchmen show that somebody will pick up. I'm very sure of it. So, so there's that. Uh, a trailer Mike made me watch before we started this show uh, was for the upcoming <laughs> Tomb Raider reboot. So we got our first trailer from it uh, starring Alicia Vikander and uh, Walton Goggins, I believe, is the villain. Uh, so, Mike, you set me up. What did you? What, what do you think of the Tomb Raider reboot trailer? Well, I mean, Tomb Raider, one of the few video game franchises that I would say, I guess, arguably has been a successful movie. It has kind of bridged that gap from video game screen to movie screen uh, with... Um, uh, Angelina Jolie. I think the f- I don't really remember these movies that well. Uh, I don't think I hated them because I, they probably came out when I was like in elementary or middle school. So I was probably just all up on them. I probably loved them no matter what, even if they're the good or bad. So uh, Tomb Raider translates well to the screen just because the the type of character that she is, uh, which hence why they're making an Uncharted movie because it's kind of like the same premise yeah. of like uh, Indiana Jones. It's basically. Indiana Jones, the video game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this this trailer it looks like they're hitting towards that um, newer Tomb Raider game. I never played it, but it got very good reviews where she's kind of a, a, a younger woman, kind of like, almost like... An origin? origin. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and this seems to be the same thing. I don't know. It, ju- it just seemed kind of generic to me. I didn't really see anything that really jumped off the screen. I mean, she's got like a bow. Okay, that's cool. She's kind of jumping around on old, like, <laughs> uh, rusted planes. I mean, I, I, get, I mean, there's... I don't really know what really differentiates. I mean... So to me- I know I know who Laura Croft in Tomb Raider is. I kind of know what she's about, but if nobody knows who this character is and they watch this trailer, I mean, what exactly is going to excite you about this movie? <laughs> well, so the only thing that I I didn't catch until, until I was watching was Walton Goggins is the villain and he is a hell of a villain. Yeah, um, he's cool. And he's actually I think in the upcoming Ant-Man movie as well cuz Ant- everything comes back to Ant-Man this week for some reason. <laughs> but it, I don't want a Tomb Raider story where she's chasing down her dad, who was also a Tomb Raider, and they own a billion dollar company. Like, it, it feels like kind of like uh, Iron Fist. Your parents own a billion dollar company, but you want to go out in the woods and and do things. Like, yeah, there there was a very similar visual moment in the trailer where she's in kind of this very stark white lobby of a giant building, and she's just like showing up like she owns the place. Like, yeah, you're getting some. Uh, Get some Iron Fist vibes there, but uh, I was surprised. I didn't know Nick Frost was going to be in this movie. Uh, I don't. I don't know if he's going to be a big part of the movie, but I could see like, oh, they're trying to get me to buy a ticket for Nick Frost, but I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, it, it does. It does seem like you said generic, and some of the quote unquote tomb things that are twisting around and puzzles she's going to obviously have to solve in this. Just I don't know. They just don't seem grabby and like in a world where we have superheroes like this isn't going to do it for me you gotta you gotta find a new way to show us what's going on uh, yeah it didn't really look like we're going to be able to rely on any sort of humor or jokes to pull us through the movie it didn't look like it was really shot in any sort of creative new exciting way so it's not really the cinematography the story seems pretty run-of-the-mill for a Tomb Raider movie, so it's just like, what are we grabbing onto here? I mean, at the very least, there was a second trailer for the Jumanji movie this week that, you know, we're not really going to talk about that at all. But uh, at least there there's something kind of creative there, whether I disagree with it or not. You know, there's kind of something kooky going on, but... Yeah, Tomb Raider seems a little flat. I don't know. Maybe we'll have to wait for the second trailer. Yeah, maybe. It might just be like, hey, we're doing Tomb Raider, if you didn't know, kind of thing. And it looks like the video game you love and play. and Because <laughs> it, it, it looks just like footage out of the video game. Like, to be mm-hmm. honest, like that that's what I would I would see. So, uh, we got that, that franchise coming back. Another franchise that won't stay dead, no matter how many times you put a bullet in it, is the Terminator franchise. Mm-hmm. Um, and this one, Terminator 6... Uh, Tim Miller is confirmed to direct this, Mike. Ooh. So, going from Deadpool to Terminator 6. <laughs> uh, he's good with special effects. He owns a special effects company. And I think they did all the mm-hmm. special effects for Deadpool. And he did... I think his company did the cutscenes for the um, X-Men Origins Wolverine video game. Which is fantastic. <laughs> it's one of my favorite games, to be honest. Nothing, wow. Nothing like the movie... They built the game first and then added, like, they tied it into the movie later. So it, it, it's great. 
Um, Linda Hamilton will return to the franchise to play uh, Sarah Connor. Oh, geez. And uh, if you didn't know this, the the rights of the movie lapsed back to James Cameron in 2019. So he will own the movie rights again. Obviously wanting to kick off a trilogy, if not seven movies, like he's doing with Avatar. <laughs> so he has plans for this new trilogy that involves Tim Miller and Linda Hamilton. And will apparently ignore the last film, X, uh, Terminator Genesis, which... He- you're yeah, I mean, okay. I just don't, I just don't know what you do. I mean, obviously, when when this movie comes out, I'm not gonna go back and do my homework of watching Terminator Three, Terminator Salvation, uh, well, Salvation. I'm, not, I haven't watched Genesis, and I won't watch Genesis. So basically, if they can somehow frame this movie and just only recognize that the first two movies were made. Maybe we'll maybe we'll be going somewhere. <laughs> well, those, those were the Cameron films, so I could definitely yeah. see them doing that. And they have time travel and such and such. Now, as much as as awful as Genesis is, it does have um, a great like intro. Like it, you think it's going to throw back to the first movie, but it takes it in a new way because of time travel, and it's awesome. But other than that, don't don't go beyond the intro. Uh, <laughs> and uh, was it from Game of Thrones? Amelia Clark looks just like a young Linda Hamilton, so she pulled that uh-huh. off. So I will give it a couple check marks, but no, no, you can ignore it. I hate Terminator Three. Terminator Three is the worst in my book. Um, <laughs> I, the only thing I remember in that movie was um, like t- Arnold's like holding like a casket of like guns or something. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> his, his mom's supposed to be buried there, and she just buried the guns for a doomsday scenario, and and he puts on the pink heart sunglasses because because they're making fun of Arnold. Oh God, it's awful. <laughs> uh, I hate that movie so much. But okay. Well, that's our news, Mike. We're going to end on Terminator, sadly. <laughs> Strange note. But, but that, okay. That's fine because we got two episodes in this week. Uh, again, if you want to know our thoughts on Kingsman, spoilers filled, go listen to our review show. Uh, in the meantime, Mike, people want to know what you're up to, what you're doing, and then, and, and, you know, you've, you're, you've you mentioned before you're moving and how that's going. Where can people find you at? Well, they can follow me at Mike Royer Design on Twitter and Instagram, and you can read my web comics at pickledcomics.com. Chris, if people want to know what you're up to, you're 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 a homeowner now. You got a whole lot of shit going on. Where can they follow you? Yeah, that's right. I mounted speakers this week weekend, Mike. That was that was Hell an yeah. adventure. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Valdan V A L D A N. I think I might start a new account to do that pop a day thing I was talking about earlier. A picture of a pop vinyl a day. Um, it'll only be Marvel and Star Wars at this point because I don't have a lot of other ones. Unless I go to my wife's selection, then it's Disney. But uh, I've got that. You can read my stuff on comicui.com. You can listen to the other show, Film Side Chats. Or you can head to YouTube and search DNN and see all the videos I do for them. And, and so on and so forth. If people want to know more about the show and other shows we've done, except last week's because I messed it up horribly, where can people <laughs> find our show at, Mike? Well, as always, please visit SuperheroSlate.com. That is the best place to find all the avenues that we host our show and to get our awesome show notes. So if you want to check out that uh, Tomb Raider trailer you don't want to hunt down the link, we got it right in our show notes at SuperheroSlate.com. And you can subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube, Google Play Music, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Tumblr. You can get us right in your email inbox every week. You can also like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want to pick up some merch from Superhero Slate, go to SuperheroSlate.com slash store. Um, if, you, if you're a fan of the show, please consider leaving us a review. Um, uh, on iTunes, that's super helpful. You can review us on Stitcher, everywhere. We really love that. That's really helpful. Helps us mm-hmm. get some new listeners. And uh, if you're a super fan of the show, all you got to do to be a super fan is just share the show with a friend share the show with a buddy and we will be here every week and maybe even quite possibly do a review for geostorm i don't know oh my god someone (laughs) someone did ask us for a review for geostorm didn't they (laughs) oh okay well maybe maybe we'll do it we'll we'll talk about it but yeah so all right all All right right. well let's uh let's go uh let's go get ready for that then mike we'll uh, catch you guys next week all right bye everybody Thanks for listening, and don't forget to subscribe. All right, 2.30? 2.30. That's when you go to the dentist. Uh, Oh! Zinger.